and again you don't have to use uh, paint for this as well when we get into the moho part where I uh, start putting the pieces together you'll you'll be able to see how that works pretty easily but someone wanted me like a hat in the wind kind of thing so I'm gonna grab this hat real quick and we'll just put that part of it kind of cool here and again I will put the timestamp if you just want to skip over all of this uh, me kind of messing around with stuff and you can go ahead and I'll have that timestamp in there where you can jump ahead so you can skip and this doesn't have to be too perfect because we're just going to use like a demo sort of thing Um, and if you're trying to make something look like it's, I don't know what's how to describe it. You know how it has the uh, your that hat has like, you'll see the fabric of it, and you'll get like the, you'll be able to see between the the, the shading of it and then, but it's like a, like a thin outline. You can always do this really quickly. Where you want it to kind of like stick out and you can kind of fade it out like so and if you do it right it should look like it's you know kind of part of the fabric kind of like that where you see a little bit of it make it lighter if you need to depend on you know how much you wanna how light you wanna make it and then you can always go back with the shadows and make sure that's normal and then you can color it in a real like light and just like maybe 16 let's see what 16 looks like yeah 16 is not bad okay. um, and then you can do whatever shadows you want around it, but it, when you when you do it right, you sh it should kind of look like it's this part here will be a little bit darker, right? But again, if it's like cotton, it's gonna give it that weird kind of cottony look. Um, so when you do do this, just just gotta keep in mind it doesn't have to be perfect. Cause it's all about flexing inside of the cotton or whatever and then you can do the blending however you like just to make it sure that it doesn't look the hat doesn't look super flat whenever you are uh, and a lot of it can be done with just black and gray again it doesn't have to be perfect just want to get the illusion and trust me <laughs> again on a lot of these things where I say it over and over again if someone's watching a cartoon and they're just a regular everyday person you know they're not going to notice everything that you do <laughs> I say that a lot because you know you show show family members something and then you'd think they're gonna pay attention to wow look how detailed the uh the hat is no <laughs> they're not gonna care like you know they and then when when you see that sometimes you're like wow why don't they care about this yeah that's normal people like are people that are not artists or anything like that like there's some people that have never been to a museum don't really care about drawing don't care about any of that right you're they're not 
going to be impressed but how detailed your hat was on your <laughs> 15 minute animation whatever right they're looking at the storyline and again I always tell everyone that's the most important part it's going to be hey what are you saying what is this about you know go back to my my, my stick figure analogy where um a friend of mine was like, why does the stick figure animation has like millions of views? <laughs> it's like surprising. Yes, yeah, so they're not as detailed as you when it comes and they don't really care about something that, you know, an artist may care about as far as the aesthetics and the look of it. You know, just like all the, the children's cartoons, like those are really not super super animated right but you sit a child right in front of that television and you think they care about how detailed the hat is doubtful doubtful but for me personally when I watch something or if I do some kind of animation there's a feeling that I wanted to have right and I think sometimes when we're you know it's I don't know so kind of like what just uh, so if you ever seen the uh, that animated uh, Coraline I think it's Coraline not Caroline but um, a lot of the artwork there it's like a feeling that you get I don't know to describe it you know what I mean just the just the overall yeah, it's almost like a um, you're walking into a uh, a painting, but it's not really a painting, but it's 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 a world where it, you know, it's it's got an aesthetic to it, right? It's got a feeling about it, uh, as far as the art, and and it takes you just like uh, when I first saw Nightmare Before Christmas, I was like, oh, I see what this this person has a certain aesthetic that that I. I don't like it all the way dark, but I like the way where it's like, it, it seems like it's something from your childhood kind of feeling, you know what I mean? Like the books and, you know, when you were growing up, they had like, well, you know, when there were libraries, <laughs> but there was, when you used to get those books, there was a smell to them. Like, it was like, oh right and then maybe you go back home to visit your you know your parents whatever and, and that book is there and it has that that smell that they all had right it's, it's a it's a it's a weird thing but sometimes you know the art to me should give you a feeling of something different right should make you feel something at least and I think a lot of that can be done with the story but if you can marry those two things together what a lot of artists are able to do I think that's I think that's great and, but again trust me if you think that people are going to be like oh I like the way that that shoelace looked the brown that you chose was <laughs> great right they're not looking at that they just see a character that's all they see hurtful to some I know but hey and a lot of this like when you're doing hats or stuff like that you know don't kill yourself like, like most of the time I'll take my time to make it out but I know I'm going to use this hat later so I want to kind of like feel it out and see if I want to change some stuff on there so I'll usually just color it like a kid and then come back and make changes later Let's see how close I can get it to not looking brand new But um, tell me, let me know if other people like 
If you know people that notice things about the way it looks that are not artists, let me know. Like people who appreciate how long you took in doing that eyeball. <laughs> and the blue that you chose. Like artists love that kind of stuff. And they see it. But a lot of people don't. So I get it. So it's two worlds. Man, they both need each other. You know, you you hope like artists are like, oh, okay, I see what you did there, but again, sometimes it could be the style that you do. They don't like it at all. I know people that don't do anything in vector, like that. That it, I don't know why. I I, I like it when it's, it's it's clean, but it does have like a feel to it. I like that t t type of thing. But there's some people that like they hate it. It's too shiny or you know or whatever it may be and I, we get it and a lot of times when I do this I don't know if other people do but I get into like this zone where I'm like it's relaxing to kind of keep you know painting over things or taking away or you know what I mean I get into this weird state where I'm like oh just keep the going and that's why these videos end up being longer because I'm <laughs> don't get to the thing I need to do but again that's why timestamp is going to be my greatest tool I think and again for anyone that I know personally I know it's sloppy don't judge me into the final product because I always do anyone knows I do a lot of changes of a lot of different things it's me trying to figure out the uh, really the color right and then also the feel of it of course to see you know what I like when it's you know what scenery is it if it's a dark scenery a lot of the things don't really have to pay attention to you know, most of the things I do, it's always a, a snowy atmosphere. And on that one in particular, I will be taking my time because I, I, there's a feel that I, I get when, you know, it's snowy atmosphere. It's a, it's a feeling that it, it gives me. Sometime calming and sometime, you know, relaxing just depends so when you see these outlines you're like why did he leave that that way trust me it's not because I'm a sloppy person it's because I'm looking for an aesthetic or a feel and I want to know which which one looks the great test <laughs> alright that was not a fan we'll shadow it down here a little bit bigger mm. oh, I don't like that one uh, nope let's see what about this one uh, I don't know we'll, we'll play around with it later this part it will bother me so I'll let me do this and then we'll get to the other part Just do it in the front so it won't bother me as much as it will. Alright, 
hope that won't drive me too crazy. Did I move? I kind of messed up the outline, I guess. Yeah, a little bit. That's okay. We can cut back. That's close enough. And lastly.
este casi destruido.
uh, depends on your curve so usually whenever you do try to create uh, a visual that kind of looks okay you just make the other lines a lot smaller so the ones technically would be closer to you like so and then when you get up in the front or the back you just basically make it a lot smaller to where it does look like it's some distance there because this side of the hat will be on the forehead part if you're looking at it from that angle so these would be a lot they should seem a lot smaller but again no one <laughs> is probably going to care if you do this or not because they don't pay attention well I just wanted to get as close as I could because I know I'm going to use that a little bit later alright so let's grab the hat here do it's gonna be forever if I do that but we'll just grab it it's copy and then I'll bring it here Edit, paste and um, whenever I do this I always tell everyone they always ask me why are you just not saving it in paint as a PNG uh, it's because of quality changes whenever you do that it's not as clean and then most of the time when I'm using Inkscape I'm going to end up vectorifying it anyway or creating a vector of it and then cleaning it up from there just depends uh, do we need that other hand? Yep. backhand and do I need to do the opposite I guess we should do the opposite so and uh, whenever I do grab these gloves I always change them anyway but we're just gonna put it in so it can get an idea uh, when we have it in the uh, the puppet there so technically this would be the outside one and a thumb will go there of course but I'm going to show you how you can use that a different little bit different way it's good enough All right. So let's go ahead and keep what we got here. Um, so whenever you do export these, and just go here, export, and then desktop. Should go to the desktop from what it's saying here. Yeah. So you'll just click here and then export then you'll click here and then export and uh, Inkscape in, oh, I'm sorry Ink, Inkscape it does name them for you so they're all separate Let's export and if you try to do it twice it's going to say you already got this so you see how it says already exists do you want to replace it no nope. because we know that's where it is all right so let's get out of here what is this 
Oh, I was looking for that. Alright, so let's go ahead and go here. And we are all going to go to the character wizard. Now, if you notice, where's my other one? Well, I guess we'll find it that later. Um, so basically, this is the size, and you can make adjustments to whatever you like. So in this case, technically, I would be... You can take them all and just erase them. Uh, it doesn't give you... I don't think it allows you to do, you know, one and then one, right? So if I do decide not to use them all, I'm only going to be able to use one... Uh, angle. Alright, but if you have a project where you know that character is going to go through a lot of different phases, you can do it that way. But for this, we're going to be using this angle uh, here. And then all of these things um, for the face, I usually take out because I'm already have everything I really need for the face. I don't need a mouth because I'm going to replace that. You can keep the mouth if you just want to have a thin line and then you can switch out whenever it speaks. Uh, you do have that option. Um, but I'm putting none for now. I never need the nose at all. And this I don't need as well. And then eyes. Eyes I usually keep. Because um, I, I do change them a little bit, but we do a little bit different so that we're not going to go on that. I just basically want to give me something white in the background. Yeah, that'll work. And then space and get this a little bit better here. Height. Ah, save it out right there. You can make them bigger or smaller, just depending on what you like. Okay. And all these other things, I'm gonna. Uh, where's bald? Uh, I think that was it. Yeah. Alright, so. And then movement. This is gonna be the most important part of this because it's good as structure, you know, the flow of the character, walking, running, whatever. And he is out of control, so we're gonna torso bend is the first thing I usually pull out. Then height. Now it looks like he's skiing, so you can use that if other products, but the height will be right about there. And this arm swing is crazy, so let's get it a little bit tighter. I don't even like that. I, you know, I've never seen anyone walk like that distance. Getting a little bit the way I like it. That's about it, usually. Maybe a little. Uh, that'll work for now, because. It'll give me a chance to show you kind of like what it'll look like. Uh, so keep that, that'll work. So let's go ahead and click OK. And there he is. Alright, so let's go ahead and open it up here. And when I first did use Moho, this was crazy to me. Because I was like, what the? But you'll love this, trust me. You will learn to love this, every part of it. All right, so the next step here is we're gonna be bringing in our pieces. And we'll just go here, then image. And okay. you can do this individually, but when I do this, uh, I create a folder, because I know uh, that's what's going to join everything. But we'll click this here. Alright, there we go. 
Let's bring it down a little bit to where it's normal. And we're not going to, uh, on this one, I'm not going to do the leg one um, for now. Uh, so what I'll do here is create a group. Name it. Whatever you like. I'm going to name these parts. put our first image which is the we'll call it body two for now enter and we're gonna put body two inside the group and then we're gonna put it inside of our character so if you look at these, these are separate. So this is what they usually, from a whole, this ends up being like the background. That's why I think that's there. But we're gonna be putting the parts inside front three, four. And let's see, where do I want this? All right, I guess right about there. So get it to the torso and you'll see that it fell behind right and the other thing you may see is that it changed the size of it so I'm going to tell you why it's important a little bit later to do the group all right so then we have parts and you'll see this here so even if you don't do anything or attach it to anything, it believes it's part of this character. So let's say I move the top arm. Let's go up to, see, it says upper arm, right? And now we go here to click on the bone layer for the character watch what happens to your import now let's do this here make sure frame phrase and then let's do to here six all right so let's show you what happens and they were in the bone layer. So when I move the arm, now you see what happens to this? Since it's inside of this character that we created, it doesn't know what bone is associated with it. So whatever I move, it'll apply that to the whole thing. And we're going to fix that. Let's go back and we are going to stay on this bone layer and let's go ahead and click this so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and take all this other stuff out so let's you can get a better look. So, upper arm patch. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, foot 
we'll leave that for now. We really don't need it though. But I just want you to see the bones. So let me go ahead and torso is here, right? And you'll see this bone here. But, you know what, let me put a background so we can kind of see what's going on. Uh, image. What should be a uh, dark or lighter? Probably. Let's go darker. So let's go back to the bone layer right here. All right, so that we're going to go ahead and select bones that are going to be associated with the movement. Let's put this on top. And I'm going to fade it away just a small bit. Mount 74. It's a little bit more translucent, like so. And let's go ahead and move it where we need it to be. So let's see, right about there, it looks like that's right there, right? I think that'll work. Alright, so I'll get rid of this. pelvis and everything else. Okay. Yeah, that's good there. Okay. Alright. So, get rid of this. And this as well. Don't need that. There we go. All right. So for the torso or the body, we're gonna go. Oh, gotta get go back into the uh, the bone here. All right. So. The bone we're going to be using for the body is going to be a couple. And you'll click on this first one, which is the select bone. And then you'll click on the bone. So you see how it identifies it, whatever bone you choose. All right? So, but we're going to be using more than just this one, so we're going to go ahead and select more, but we want them to be all together. So, click shift. So now we got this bone and this bone. Then I'm also going to add this one here. And then this one and this one here all right so basically it's look at it it's like your spine so this is the bottom part of the spine this is the top part these are the shoulders left shoulder the right shoulder and this is just a pivot arm for movement when you're moving the whole character 
but we, we need that associated with the the body part all right and then this one here so basically these are all that are going to be associated with the body everything else is either a leg or an arm you see so this would be a leg this is the left leg bone one two three well let me start over here so this is the thigh this is the the shin and these would be the foot and that's the left leg and the same thing with the right so this will be here this is the right thigh right shin and then right foot and then this is the upper arm this is the lower arm and then this bone is going to be represented for the hand so you have three just one two and three same thing with the right arm so top part of the arm lower part of the arm and then again the hand All right and of this is the bone that you're going to be using for the head but these the whole body all these body bones are what we need and we have them all selected right because we hit the shift so let's go ahead and get out of the shift and we're going to go back to our imported body that we added to the puppet and um, I meant to say this me doing this doesn't mean that you have to do it this way you can create your own bones for um, any anything that you put inside moho um, but what we're doing here is the replacement method right so we're going to basically replace every part of this character we're going to replace the torso right we're going to re end up replacing the arms all of that will be replaced but it'll be our cutout design all right so let's go to the body here which is our body and then we clicked on the body and then we're going to go to bone and then we're going to click on this and it says select I'm sorry you selected bone for fl if I can stay in place you selected bone for flex binding all right and we've chosen all the bo the body bones here and we want all of these bones to be associated with our body so all the bones are selected this is going to be able to adapt those bones to our body so we'll click on use I'm um, sorry I just almost messed it up big time you uh, this one here so all the ones we selected this would have messed this up because this is all bones if you see here it says use all bones for flex one. no we want to use selected bones for flex binding so that's the ones we we selected before all right one two three four five six all of that are going to be pertaining to the body so we'll just click this and that's it now all of those bones are going to be associated with our body that we imported all right and before you saw that whenever we did move the character it moved the whole it it, it wasn't stable all right so let's see what happens now S see how the bo nothing is moving but before when we just imported this and just imported it into the the character wizard itself and then remember when i moved the arm and then this body moved which is not what we want all right now on this particular one i'm not going to go over the leg part because i just wanted to show you how you can just import um your 
drawing of your character in here and just replace it replacing the the wizard character character wizard that you created and that's because the torso right instead of using their torso no shading no anything all right so we don't need this anymore so we end up deleting this part now sometimes I will use the rest of it because you can change this color right and then maybe the you know once you change that color you can change the arms but again those it's no shading no anything when you do that and let me sh show you what happens now that we do have the right bones associated to this body so we're going to make a movement with it and you're going to see I'm going to go ahead and take that all the bones off so it'll give you a better view and then let's go ahead and put this back to where it needs to be so it's not see through like it is okay alright now we're back to I need the other layer. Okay, so all right, that looks okay. All right, so right now, um, whenever you do, you click on this. It just you can have the bones disappear if you're trying to get a view of what you know the, the character's doing or whatever. And this is on top of everything. Uh, sometimes it's hard to get a visual, right? So you can click here. And you don't have to see the bones, but they're through there. All right, so let's go to let's go to two. Matter of fact, let's go to three. And all those associated bones, again, like I said, they're through there. Let's go here, and let's go ahead and say this guy had a stomach ache and he had to bend down for whatever reason, right? You're going to click this here, transform bone. And when you do that, it should have, sorry, messed it up one second here. <laughs> okay, there we go. Alright, so we'll get to select this one, right? And we're going to say, hey, he's sick. So he's going to be bending over. Alright, so that bone there, this is the second one. So there's, remember the shoulder ones as well. So this would be the top bone. Alright, this will be the other bone, which is this middle one here. Alright. And this one here, if you're swinging off of the monkey bars or whatever, your character's swinging like that, you know what I mean? Everything at the bottom where the legs are, it would move. So this one, hey, he's looking in a hole or something, right? And I'm going to show you how to tighten this up where it doesn't look like a... a a rubber band person and I'll show you how to do that probably in another video but I just want you to see and this is basically uh, the pivot one basically moves like so alright so let's see let's go back alright so let's see we'll start at 2 alright so first movement bends down Alright, and maybe a little move like so. And then say let's do it far so you get a picture of what that 
that'll look like. Shit in the background. Get rid of that. Alright, so you can see here that it, it will be stable. Um, there's another way to do it, but just wanted to show you what that looks like. So when you do import anything into, you know, the character, you won't get that wizard character. So let's add maybe something else here. And this is our part. So I always bring it into this folder because if it's not the right size and all that, it'll kind of look weird. All right, so we're gonna import some more. All right, so we'll click on into this group. And then we'll click new layer and we're doing image and let's go to desktop where everything is. Alright, so let's go ahead and put the head in here. Okay, let's do the head. There we go. Let's do the arm. Let's go ahead and do. Is that the right way? Yeah, glove. Mm -hmm. Let's do the hat. That's good for now. All right, so. As you can see, there everything's large, right? So you want to bring all of those down to size. Let's get this out of the group real quick. Because we already have the size of the body we want. And let's get this down to where it needs to be. And this arm doesn't go with this uh, actual suit, but just for the sake of showing, let's name this the hat. This is the arm. And this of course is the the head. Alright, so we got everything the size we kind of needed to be. Let's go ahead and put all that in there. Now, just because we imported, it's not associated with any of the correct bones. So it's just everything's flexing. This is correct because you'll see it doesn't bend like the other ones bend. Let's take this out for a second. So you can get it. Alright, so. The body is the, the part here is just normal, but everything else is acting kind of weird. It's not, doesn't look right, right? It's because we haven't associated with any bones yet. So let's get the head in place. I can't remember if that's the correct size. It looks okay. The arm needs to be here. And this is not the right arm, but again, just to show you, it's kind of close. So, there. 
and you could say the shadow is not correct for this either because it's angled out straight but again just for the hand over here enough and this is just going to be the the video for that the hat person that asked me about making it kind of flow in the wind but we'll just stick it on here like that for now all right now with this head uh, we can put it into this layer and I'm going to show you what happens this is the head layer for the, the other puppet that we created so this is the head folder which has eyes nose everything right so let's put this head inside here okay so whenever they do change folders it changes the size that's why i imported it with a group get this back to normal though okay. let's get our head hat I'm sorry part of the head layer as well and again when you move layers it changes the size and everything let's get this here now since everything that's part of the head is going inside of the uh, the head you'll s see what happens here now let's go back to our bronze now Now you see how everything's still not flexing right as far as the bones or anything, right? Let's open that up. Get this back where it needs to be. Alright. So um, I'm just going to do the side by side. So let's say again we do have the this head bone and we need it associated with this bone here, right? So what we'll do is click on select and then the head and then we're going to go back where it says use selection for flexing uh, or the binding which would be that bone but as you can see what happens is the head is already associated with the bone right so it's not going to change anything if we just import this into here right because it's already associated with it so let me go here and I'll show you kind of how to fix that all right so this is let's move this so this is the head all right and then if you look here you're gonna see a little X which is associated with this here all right that X needs to be at the the angle where you want it so when it does move that's going to be our bending point right 
see how that bends there. Okay. And then let's go bring the hat back here. And the hat has one as well. And we're just gonna go ahead and move that. Yeah. I'll say about here. It's like here, right about here. So those are all going to be the bending points. So the hat is bending there. Technically, that looks weird. It should bend in the middle, but it's here. All right, there we go. See what that looks like. It's kind of bending where I need to bend, and I reversed it, so that's why it looks kind of weird. But that's where we kind of want the pivot point. Okay. Now you see where everything's still acting kind of strange, but the size of everything here does not move. And we're not on top of the skeleton. So that's why you start seeing that weirdness. Okay. So let's go ahead and go back. And if you want it to, right? All of these things just need to be moved over. So that's this, right? That's this. Go ahead and get the body back where it needs to be. This is right here. Right about there, right? Right about there. Because that's where the shoulders were, stomach. Stomach bend will be right here. So you can see where that point is here. Okay, so let's get this arm out of the way. And then see what it looks like now. So bring the head back. I've got to fix the head again because it's not all where it needs to be. So move the hat real quick. Alright, so this is the pivot point that we created. And that needs to be about here. Alright, other hand. Get this out of the way real quick. Alright, so it needs to be about Right about there. Alright. So uh, remember we, what I was saying about the eyes, which are here? Move this hat out the way. Alright, so there we got, we got the, uh, the eye here. Alright. The nose, we're not. Get the nose, delete that nose. Alright. So. With the eyes, if you wanted to use them, just want to make sure they're in the right place. Okay, so and this will be below the head. And 
I would make them bigger. You can make them bigger by just going into it here. And then go click on here. And then this you can just make larger if you like. Like so. Alright. this one as well get that a little bit bigger All right uh, looks close pretty close I think that'll don't won't look too weird yeah, this angle's weird though Uh, we'll just playing around with it. We'll just it. But it, uh, so basically, you can use those eyes because your head layer is here. So let's go back to 100%. Alright, there. And the eye is right there. So let's see. Now everything looks a lot better right because we got everything what we needed on the bone part and it looks weird because it doesn't have any arms it doesn't give you perspective of, you know what the character may be doing all right so if you look at it like that right everything looks normal now because we've got it all the bones are associated with the right thing We'll make sure we move our imported parts where right where we need those bent bones to be. Alright. I can't remember if this has eyelids, so blink, yeah. But they're the wrong color. There we go. So there we go. And then um this is so your head layer, right? has everything you need for the head we have our associated head this is do we did I delete the other head let's see did I I think I maybe I did I, oh it's here <laughs> so we don't need that anymore we can delete it like so All right and this head layer has our eyes that are already pre-made in the character wizard and we don't have to make any eyes it's already done right and then let's go ahead and probably end up moving this you can move that bone but let's see here So that would be better. And it's only flexing like that because of where it is, but you can change that. But you can see every, it's independent of everything else. Alright, so like so. And and the only whenever you see this happening, this is just because this is not associated with uh the correct bone. It it's associated with all bones. So when you import it and, and you know it's either going to be placed into the correct uh, grouping like we did with the head uh, and the hand has the same grouping as well. So we'll do that now. Go back here and this hand is going to be associated with this the top arm right. So this hand layer here and right so they have different things right so you can replace your own this is a glove of course and we're going to put it inside of the prefabricated hand layer which is here We gotta make sure that. Oh, 
point should be right about here, I guess. Right there. Okay, then we get it where it needs to be. Same. Bring that back real quick. So if you did want to mix and match everything, you could do that. But see how so our hand would typically be something around there, a little bit smaller, of course. All right. So if you did want to use their arms for the puppet, you can do that if you like. And then see the forearm here. And then you see the upper arm. Alright, so we'll click on the upper arm. And say you wanted to use this arm. You'll click here. Click this. And then change it to this color. Alright, see what that looks like. So now you've got that here, right? And we can move it where it needs to be because it's just off because we haven't placed it in the right spot. And uh, is uh, and also with the the forearm, we can change that as well, the color at least. And. There you go. And aren't we using? Yeah, we're using our hands. Uh, I'll have my, there we go. We're using our hands. And then, if you and I'm not going to keep this on, but I just want to let you know you can fix it. And then we'll change the color of this one. We'll just click on here and get the color. Okay, so did it. All right, so that's it. Um, so I'll probably do another video just on the leg part because right now it's this whole body piece is just connected oh, to all right. uh, together. That's it. Um, thank you for uh, watching the videos and. Um, thanks for uh, following. I didn't even really pay attention to the following part because I didn't know anyone was following me. This is like 30 followers. Um, and I didn't even like put this up. I was kind of putting it up to, for training and other things. But I appreciate anyone that follows um, what I'm doing. So, All right, that's it. Um, I will put all the timestamps in there. So, you know, the other people that don't want to see me kind of like go into the zone of cleaning things up um, I'll be able to get, put the timestamp where you'll get right to the part where you can import and do what you need to do uh, for your characters going forward alright thank you